Hey everyone, this is Tina with Overall Adventures. Thank you so much for joining me. Come on, come in. This is a Q&A video. So if you ask me a specific question or if you're looking for a specific answer, you can kind of open the description box below and I'll guide you to where you can jump to that specific part of the video. Pez Mirror, Leah Williams, Maury D, Heartland Adventures, Felicity Louise, Halloweeny, Max, and Queen of Yesteryear asked me all about how to kind of get out of um, maybe creative slumps or what to do when you're feeling like really uninspired or how to get motivated to write when you really just don't feel like writing. Great questions. I let myself not write. I, I don't know, I'm not like so structured. I find like people, especially like ugh, lately, I don't understand what it is with like this new age stuff where it's like you need to form a habit and you need to do it every day. Like I find that way of approach like so masculine. Uh, I have a great video on creative cycles, so if you're struggling with motivation, check that video out. I'll link it above. But basically, I believe that like creativity and the arts in general is this like kind of cycle, like the tide coming in and out. And there's times when we're feeling like, really motivated, and there's times where we're feeling like we need we need to make. And then there's times of silence, and it's all a part of of the process. So part of me is like, I don't want to push you. If you don't feel like making, don't make. But if you're like Learn, but there's a balance, right, of learning to like gauge yourself, like, are you really being like a little lazy? That happens to me too, like, if I'm just feeling like, oh, I just don't feel like it, that's different than like, nothing is coming forth. And it's about learning yourself and learning your own creative process and learning like when to kind of call yourself out, being like, hey, you know, you, you know you need to write, you know you need to sit down and make something. So in terms of motivation, what can help is establishing a routine. Like a lot of these kind of new agey or, I don't know, like self-help people say is making a routine. But like, I currently don't have a routine, but that's because I've journaled for so long. So when I don't journal, I feel it. Like I feel like this pent up emotions or things that I need to say. Um, but if you're new to journaling, it is helpful to start some kind of practice, whether that's first thing in the morning, doing morning pages, or in the evening right before you go to bed. The other key for me is to, with motivation, is carrying the journal all the time uh, so that you, whenever you have a down moment, to just kind of write. Like, how do you get motivated when you're depressed? Or how do you get out of like a creative rut? Um, I like to, in, that, in those moments, I think it's important to study or to educate yourself on the masters or get inspired by other people. Um, so that could be watching videos, that could be like looking through some books, that could be going to a museum, that could be going out in nature. Um, that could be resting. I find that like if I'm really stuck, I'm tired, or I've been pushing too hard in one direction and not really listening to what actually needs to come through. So sometimes just totally letting go of a project or a notebook and just starting fresh, I find this to be really helpful with motivation. Maybe there's something that's just not clicking. And um, another thing that's helpful to get out of a rut is to play, is to get into that childhood self. So finger painting, getting out in nature, building a little fairy house, picking up a totally new thing like a ukulele or um, something that's out of your discipline and getting your mind to think in a different way can totally help getting over a creative rut. But I do want to make a bigger video on this because I, I think this is a nice and juicy topic that a lot of us struggle with. Um, so my main answer is to play, get uncomfortable, take a rest and educate yourself from other people. So also wanted to include uh, one YouTuber that is really inspiring me and has been inspiring me for a long time. And, and her name is Jordan Clark. Uh, please go check her out if you're a journaler. She really is a beautiful, she's got a beautiful channel. And I, whenever I'm feeling like Meh, a little weird, I kind of just, I like to watch her videos and she's very calm, very peaceful. And then her entries and her, um, just the way that she goes about uh, making videos is very calming to me and, and centering so go check her out if you're looking for some inspiration the next section is consistency so t care oh t cami patroclus olivia kareen alexa Beirudi, and Haley merzrick oh my god guys i'm so sorry for butchering your names um ask me about consistency to kind of so like how to get over the hump of starting a new journal um perfectionism, how, you know, if you're a full-time student or if you work full-time, like how do you find the time and energy to create? Um, do I journal every day? Stuff like that. How to be consistent. So do I, do I journal every day? Yes, I do most of the time. 
but do I put pressure on myself to journal every day? No. Does that make sense? There's like a difference. I don't force myself to journal every day and I don't beat myself up if I don't journal that day. What I will do for consistency is again, take my notebook with me and I did this in the, when I worked in the office job. I did this when I worked at a restaurant and I did this when I was, and I'm a full-time student right now. So I keep the journal with me at all times. If you're a student, it's easy. You keep the journal open on top of your binder. I literally journal in class sometimes if I'm feeling like I need to get something down. The teacher doesn't know, it looks like you're taking notes. So that's a great way to do it. When I worked at restaurants, I journaled on napkins. I'm not even kidding. I wrote, I like, I sometimes I just need, it's like bursting out of me. If somebody says something or I have this interaction or I meet this interesting person, I, I just need to feel like I'm creating in a, in a job that's like sucking my creativity or my soul. I keep a journal with me. Or if you work in an office and you can sit on a computer, I always had a Word document up. I was making like visual collages like while I was doing my other work. Um, and, or I have like just even a scrap of paper with like just taking my own notes because people don't, you know, it looks like you're working. I mean, it sounds kind of bad, but that was the way that I could like kind of ease this like, oh my God, I'm like working in a job that I'd hate or I'm like in school and I'm, tired, things like that, I would, I would take the journal to the work and like feel like my creativity was more a part of my life there. I deal with exhaustion. Okay, so this might be relevant for you if you're going through this kind of new transition or you're out of school recently. Check out my most recent video I did on like how to, how to kind of my guide to college, post-college life as an artist. There's a lot of good tips in there for you, but um, embracing the exhaustion that you feel when you're working a job or in school um, and not doing the kind of creative work that you want to. And instead of beating yourself up about it, using that turmoil as fuel to either create more or to allow yourself to rest. You are not, not an artist. You are always an artist. You are, and I feel like I can't say this enough to you guys. You are always an artist, whether you're making every day, whether you're journaling every day or not. There's no such thing, in my opinion, as an inspiring artist or an aspiring writer. You are. You are. You're a creative being. The fact that your blood throws through your veins is an act of action, is an act of rebellion, is movement. You are creations. If you really want to journal every day, form some kind of routine. I think morning pages are the easiest. I'll link a couple links below as to how to kind of get into a morning pages routine. Um, but. Asking yourself, why do you want to be consistent? That's one of my question back to you. If you ask me about consistency, why do you want to be consistent? What are you looking for out of your journal? Are you trying to make a new habit or are you just trying to be consistent because you think that's what effective journaling is? So ask yourself that question and let me know in the comments below. I got a lot of good questions, juicy questions on self-discovery. Art of Evie, Avery Woodruff, Megan Drafton, Little Bit of Hippie Love, Christina Rosetta, Lainey Tate, Laura, Sabrina, and Cece Ryburn asked me questions about like, you know, what are the most important things I learned about journaling? Am I different, a different person because I journal? Do I see the world in a different way because I journal? Oh, such a juicy question, I love it. So the most important thing I've learned about myself or the world while journaling, my gosh. I'd say the most important thing I probably learned about myself is that um, I am forever changing and I am forever uh, growing. And so it kind of gives me this perspective, you know, having all of these notebooks that kind of chart my who I am through all the years, it gives me this perspective that um, I'm always with myself. And I'm always, um, I'm never, if, you, if even if it feels like I'm stuck, it always gets better and it'll always move. And uh, there's just, I don't know, I, there's a lot of excitement for me in journaling because it's like, what, what will the next notebook hold? When I hold a new notebook, I, I see this as summer. I'm looking at this and saying, what is summer going to hold in these blank pages, you know? So I guess the most important thing I learned about myself is that uh, I am the author of my life. I am the author of, of what happens, of how I want to tell my story. I can make myself sound like a really depressing, um, 
you know, there's a lot of stuff that's happened to me that isn't great and I can make myself sound that way. Or I can, I can choose, how do I wanna, you know, how do I wanna tell myself who I am? I think journaling and healing are one and one and the same. I really need to do a whole video on this. Uh, for me, I have gotten through some really tough stuff from journaling and I continue to use it as my main tool for healing and meditation. Uh, so what does that mean? That means like asking the tough questions. That means feeling like I have a place where I can be by myself. I'm totally private. I can say whatever the heck I want or need to say. And I don't have a filter. I don't worry about sounding too mean or I, I'm a person who is a people pleaser for sure. So this is the place where I don't have to please anyone. I don't have to please myself. I can say whatever nitty gritty thing that I want or feel like I need to say just to get it off of my chest. Um, this is my total, this is my total freedom space. Um, I think, I think that in itself, having that space of freedom intuitively creates healing. Uh, but I will talk about this more in the future. If I didn't journal, I can't imagine not journaling, but if I didn't, I think, I think I would just like, time would kind of pass by and I wouldn't, I wouldn't pause to reflect as much and to see my own growth and to see like how far I've come. I mean, journaling is literally like, you know, this is so silly, but you know when you like wake up in the morning and you wake up in your own body and you're like very aware of like, again, I rise as myself. And journaling is literally like putting myself, all these thoughts, all these feelings that I can't see and touch, it makes them tangible. It makes them touchable. It makes them seeable and readable. So it's like, it's almost like I'm taking my spirit, all this floaty airy stuff and making it something that I can hold and cherish and, and uh, nurture. So there's something really sacred and special about ink and pen because it is, it is power. It is uh, transformative. I hope that helps. It's fairly kind of a fluid answer, but that really is a big reason why I journal is to is to kind of see myself. This is such a good question too. Do I have a balance between aesthetics and meaning? I don't try to make my journals look pretty. I guess like for Instagram and YouTube, I like, I you know I show them to you and, and I have like a pretty background or something like that. But um, for the most part, I really do try to honor mistakes. I am starting to art journal and that has been hard for me because I really want it to look perfect. And that's a whole different thing with here. I like let it be messy. Art journaling, I'm struggling with perfectionism and balancing aesthetics and meaning. I don't really have aesthetics in here. I try not to, I try not to. Um, but bullet journaling, yes. Thank you so much for watching. That was like really digging deep for me. I hope that is helpful for you. If you have any more questions, please let me know in the comments below. Or if there's anything I forgot um, or anything else you just kind of want me to elaborate on, let me know. I hope this was helpful for you. This is a dense, chunky video <laughs> and thank you so much for watching and again thank you for your questions and your concerns and, and just sharing yourself with yourselves with me and uh yes i wish i could give you all a hug and you know keep keep going keep writing keep keep doing the deep brave soul searching work it will it will pay off you're learning you're learning yourself and, and that is what we we walk through this world with so thank you Thank you.